thank y'all for tuning back in to your favorite channel. Pelican Bay K9 is giving it to you the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Some folk gonna like it, some ain't. Y'all hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. That way you don't miss none of the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to donate to the channel, cash app, dollar sign, Pelican Bay K9s. Capital P, capital B, capital K. Without the S on the end. Pelican Bay Kennels. Sorry about that if you want to donate to the cash app. PBK. Okay, you know, big salute to all the dog lovers from one side of the world to the other side of the world, from one side of the country to the other side of the country. We got some dog talk and some dog news today, and we break it down on some, pedig some pedigrees, some good old pedigree talk when it comes to them yellow dogs. So y'all sit tight. Let's get into it. Like I said, big shout out and big salute to all my brothers and sisters that's rocking with the bay out there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my brothers and sisters is rocking with the bay. Let's get into this thing, man. First thing we're going to talk about, you know, is uh, learning how to communicate with your dog. You no, know, even if your dog is not trained, knowing when your dog is trying to communicate with you and things will be a whole lot better, especially when it comes to house training. You know, a lot of brothers and sisters might want to know uh, how you can tell when your dog ready to use the bathroom, when he's ready to do number two. Or what you know, just certain things you gotta pay attention. Your dog gives you signs certain times, you just ignore them. You know, how many times your dog been scratching trying to get out the cage, but we may ignore it, and then he goes and pees in the cage. You know, or how many times we have to really pay attention. Sometimes your dog might just come lick you, your dog might just come lay, lay his or her head on your lap. It's certain things your dog will do to let you know, you know. Certain things. Now, if you bring a dog straight from outside into the house, different story. But we're talking about a puppy. You know, when you, when you raise them up from a, and, and, and a two-month-old puppy, that's a different story. But once a dog starts um, being used to being in the house, pay attention to the signs that they give you. You know, because a lot of them dogs are smarter than we give them credit for. And they're already telling you, I got to go to the bathroom or I got to do this or somebody's outside or Whatever, you know, you just have to pay attention. Once you learn to pay attention to one thing that that dog is trying to tell you, and you realize, oh, every single time they're trying to tell you that, they do the same exact thing, then you start noticing other things that dog do, you know. So it's all about learning how to communicate with your dog, with your animal, whatever kind of animal that you got. Learning the communication with them, and life with that animal will be a whole lot better. But let's get on to that news. The first thing we're getting on to that news is a dog saves his family from a house fire you know dog saves family from a house fire and you, you know how pbk9s give it to you we give the good the bad and the ugly but today we rock it with the good you know pbk9s let's get into it yeah my wife's baby first charles miller says yesterday afternoon his wife was on the second floor of the rockville home taking care of their 14 month old granddaughter molly had, couldn't go in the room because it would disturb the baby from taking a nap meanwhile downstairs in their basement an electrical fire broke out damaging the bottom level and sending smoke through the floorboards she's probably on the couch here seeing the smoke and then she ran up and when molly starts banging on the door with her paws you know something's wrong so I'm glad my wife opened the door. The Millers say no smoke alarms went off. But Molly was able to alert Mrs. Miller just in time for them to get out of their home on Green Pasture Drive. She said Molly was yanking her yeah. to get out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Molly's strong. Yeah. She's smart. She wanted to get the hell out of the house. Molly. Molly's not just any dog. The Millers say she was bred and trained to be a guide dog for the nonprofit group Guiding Eyes for the Blind, but she failed one of the tests. She didn't pass the cut to be whatever they look for. Mr. Miller says his adored lab might have missed the mark to be a guide dog, but she aced yesterday's test. Despite the significant damage, no one was injured. I am blessed. I mean, that's the most important thing. You know, material stuff don't mean nothing to us, you know, but and it'll all get rebuilt and we'll all be forgotten in a year from now. But what won't be forgotten is Molly's quick action. She's a hero. Yeah. She's like unbelievable. Now let me ask y'all brothers and sisters, would a pedigree matter if the dog saved your life? How much would that paper matter? How much would it matter if that dog off Yellow, that dog off Matey, that dog off Jeep, Eli, how much would all that matter if that dog saved your life? <laughs> Some of my brothers in the chat probably saying, uh, it, it'd be a whole lot better. <laughs> It'd be a whole lot better. But how, how, how much would that dog matter? How much would them papers matter 
if that dog put his life on the line for you, if he saved your life, you know, is there a price on that? Can somebody come purchase that dog from you? You know? Hey, I don't know. This is a question for them brothers and sisters down in the chat, man. Next, we got a dog found in Connecticut in bad shape. And uh, animal shelter, the rescue in that area is offering rewards, you know, for anybody with answers. Connecticut dog in bad shape, PBK, PBK nines, giving it to you the way I always do, fair and unbiased. Y'all hit that like button. Let's get into it. To a horrific story out of Hartford. One dog has been euthanized and no covering after they were abandoned in the city. NBC Connecticut's Jane Caffrey joining us live outside Hartford Police Headquarters with the very latest on the investigation and how animal advocates are responding tonight. Jane. Keisha Mike, today the animal law advocates Desmond's Army announced a reward. They're now offering $11,000 for information that leads to the prosecution of whoever is behind these dogs' extreme injuries. It's horrifying, you know, to find dogs like that. She's talking about two dogs found dumped in this wooded area off Albany Avenue and Mark Twain Drive Friday morning. Hartford Animal Control says the two pit bulls had extensive injuries to several parts of their bodies. These are photos of those two dogs that were severely hurt, according to a post on Desmond's Army Facebook page. The fact that the ears were mauled, um, they appeared to be mauled off and um, the overall condition and cuts on the dogs. It appeared as though um, it was part of a, a, a dog fighting session. Hartford police tell NBC Connecticut they are investigating to determine how the dogs were injured, but did not confirm that they are investigating dog fighting. Dog fighting is a felony in the state of Connecticut. We're seeing more and more egregious cases of abuse. Both dogs were taken to a veterinary center in Windsor for medical treatment. While one is now recovering, Hartford Animal Control says the other dog's injuries were so extensive that he was humanely euthanized. This dog you know, just simply couldn't be saved or, or he would have been either too traumatized or too injured. And um, it was the humane thing to do. Desmond's Army says it wants stricter penalties for animal abuse here in Connecticut. Reporting live in Hartford, Jane Caffrey, NBC Connecticut News. Now we got a dog fight to talk about. A dog fighting bus, rather. PBK9 is going to keep giving it to you, my brother. I tell you, got a dog fighting bus. But I don't think I'm going to tell y'all where it's at this time, this episode. I'm just going to tell you we got a bus that happened. But I ain't going to tell you where it happened at. I'm just going to tell you about it. You know what I'm saying? Just going to tell you about it. But let's keep this dog news going. Because we got a dog bus. Like I said, I might speak on it. I ain't going to tell you where it's at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it just is what it is. You know, let's move on, man. It's getting warm around here, my brothers and sisters. It's, it's especially down south. You know, with them gators start moving and walking in the summertime. And we letting them dogs swim, go to the rivers and all that type of stuff. This particular situation we got a brother who let his dog go swim to the river you already know what happened gator got hold to him you already know what happened after that brother say he ain't going out like that you know like i always say you got some folk that gonna let their dog go to the river and you got some folk that's gonna get down like this brother let's get into it a crazy story you won't believe, but a man and his dog have the scars to prove it. Thank you for joining us on the Night Beat at 10. I'm Amanda Hall. And I'm Russ McCaskey. Glad you're with us. Art Allwater says that he jumped on an alligator's back, pried its mouth open, and saved his dog named Roger. Yes, you heard that right. He says he pried the alligator's mouth open. The Night Beat's Justin Case went to Moorhaven to talk to Art about the crazy day. Justin, what happened after Roger the dog was freed from the gator? Well, right behind us is the section of the river where that attack happened. And actually, do you see that sailboat right over there? The house right on the other side of that sailboat, that is where Art lives with his wife and their dog, Roger. And he says that once he was able to pry the jaws open of that gator, he freed his dog, and then the gator came after him, actually attacking him, thrashing, even trying to pull him underwater. But we have good news. Both are okay. Both have healed up. And tonight, Art is telling his story as a warning for others. 
Don't mess with art all water. That goes for you warm-blooded folk. And the cold-blooded critters, too. I'm not going to ever forget it, right? A day that started like any other morning coffee, let the dog out. He went in the river right there, and I'm, I'm sitting there. A few seconds later, five se I see a big splash. Oh, my God, I know what's happening. Ended with a massive gator inviting Roger the dog over for breakfast. He's going to kill him, and I could not let that happen, so I ran down the bank. You don't think in those situations, you just, you just act. If, like a, if your kid was being attacked, you would not stop to think about it. You would do whatever you had to do to save him. Oh, and there's something I haven't told you about Art. And I still rem remember how my fingers fit in the gaps of his teeth. It's, they, they have gaps, you know, between their teeth, and my fingers fit perfectly in there. This 77-year-old is an Olympic weightlifter, the oldest in the like state, that. and he still competes regularly. And it was open. And it was... So the gator did not know who he was messing with. We were both walking. We were alive. <laughs> and I go walk over to the back door, and I yell, open the door, and I said, Terry, 911, call 911. I just was wrestling an alligator. She says, what? The scars are staying, but the gator's not. Art says FWC came out here and put it down. I wish we had located them, but relocated them. But I guess they have to uh, shoot them if they attack a person. Uh, and I, I attacked him first. I mean, <laughs> of course, he shouldn't have attacked my dog. And there is a picture of Art's wound on his inner thigh of right after it happened. It is too graphic to show, but he did say that the doctors at the emergency room told him that if it was just two inches away, it could have hit his artery, and he could have bled out here at this river and never told this story to us. But his dog, Roger, used to go swimming in this river all the time, but the 12-year-old dog now steers clear of this river and does not go in at all. Live on the Night Beat, Justin Case, Wink News. It's always a great watch when you see a pet owner rescue their dogs from an alligator. You know what I'm saying? Because that's straight, you got straight love and bravery, man. Straight love and bravery. But like I said, man, we're going to get down into these pedigrees today as well. Talking about that, that, that stuff that I'm running, that yellow stuff. And we're going to talk about percentages as far as like 25, 50%, 75%, 100%. We're going to talk about that as well. As well as the dog fighting bus, you know. But first... You know, let me give you some more of this news. We got a puppy that decided to crash the news anchors. He was giving the weather. He was telling about the weather. Live, why he telling about the weather? Pitbull puppy coming and crash the scene. They didn't say it was a pitbull puppy, but I'm looking at the puppy, and I can tell it's a pitbull puppy. You know, um, crashes the scene. So y'all check this out. Somewhere up north, because we don't get this much. We don't, we, you know, we wasn't getting this much snow, you know. But y'all check this out, PBK nines. Let's get into it. You know, it got brighter out, a little warmer out, and their crews have been out. Streets like this will be easier to navigate, um, and it's not as icy as it is slippery right now. But you got to be careful. We have, besides talking to John, who's been out walking his dogs, talking to other folks who have ventured out because they have to. Uh-oh, this dog, I hope they don't realize this dog just ran out here. Um, hey, come here, come here. Come here, I don't see an owner. Uh, okay, hi there. I, I'll keep an eye on her. Anyway, hello, hello. Oh, boop. What do you know? We don't want to start, forget the people we talked to earlier. I want to get to know this dog. Um, just ran. <laughs> Mom, anyway, I got a kind of couple of businesses going. If anybody I'm, knows I'm that dog, dog it's John. John's got to know every dog yeah, in the know. John lives over there. This dog came from over here. <laughs> oh well, I'm sure it lives in this house, but there are cars coming and going. We have now expanded it's a great the day. business. I'm the Bob's ice scraping and kennel service. <laughs> I, it, life is good. I won't charge for this. This is a freebie. <laughs> Marissa, this is why you don't stay indoors oh. on a winter day. You oh, my know. gosh, I love it so hey, much. Stay I'm so sorry. No, are you okay? Did she really just run out? Yes, she just jumped through the gate. Oh, she got through day. the gate. She wanted to see us. Oh How are you gosh, doing, okay? Oh. Yes, yes. Okay, be careful. It's very slippery. And what's this dog's name? Pierogi. Pierogi. Oh, I love that name. Life is good. Oh, oh my gosh. Life is good. Excited. Thank oh. you so much. Be careful, okay? We're doing it all, people. Oh, this is awesome. Our I can pleasure. hear our photographer, Indira, cracking up in the background. And back to what I was saying about learning dog communication. We all know dog communication when it comes to we about to get bit, right? We all know when we see that dog coming down the street, how to communicate with him then when he's coming to get our ass. We all know how to communicate then. So use that same method of communication 
besides with your dog, you know, instead of using it when you're getting bit, use it with your dog to communicate with him. So you can know what he what he what he's trying to tell you or she's trying to tell you, and it'll make your job a whole lot easier. You know, whether it's housebreaking, um, obedience training, or whatever. Your dog always gives you signs. That's the same sign that you know when I was talking to brothers and sisters about um teaching their dog scent work. You know, when you teach your dog scent work and he tells you, oh, this is the scent right here. This is where the scent is at. You always got to watch your dog for signs that he give you. He ain't going to say, oh, and say it in words. Oh, I smell something. No, he's going to do something. And you're going to have to pay attention because he's going to do it every single time. And that's his way to speak to you. You know, that's his way to speak to you. But on this incident, we got a dog named Chico, you know. Got a dog named Chico that broke out of the house and ran away. But guess where he ran away to? And he came back home. But guess where he ran away to? This joker went a mile down the street, you know, and stopped by the police station and just went in there and spoke, you know, and left. But they got it all on camera. So y'all check this out. Chico, the dog that ran away from home and stopped by the police, police station to say hi and then went back. Chico is a one-year-old Husky and German Shepherd mix. I got a thing for dogs that just look like wolves. You know, he looks like a wolf, I think. <laughs> but Chico is anything but wolf-like. We're going to have him at my dad's store, you know, to be a guard dog, but, you know, he's just too... doesn't take stuff seriously. He loves to play fetch. Well, usually he just drops it and, you know, lets her roll around, then I grab it and I throw it again. But one morning, it was his owner, Edward, who'd have to fetch him. They posted that picture at 3.30 a.m. While Edward was asleep, Chico ran out the gate. started chewing it. And you've never taken him to the police station before? No. And that's exactly where he went. Chico blowing up social media that morning with photos of his furry self greeting employees at the Odessa Police Department, a mile away from Edward's home. That's kind of cool, <laughs> you know, he knows where to go. But the post circulated to where it even caught the attention of Edward's nephew. He asked me, is that Chico? And I'm like, well, yeah, and I came outside and checked it, but he was here already. And that's exactly right. After Chico said his hellos to the department, it may have been his curfew calling because he ran out OPD's doors and headed back home. He does got the look of a German Shepherd and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of people were posting he probably wanted to join the squad or something like that. Were you trying out for the canine unit? <laughs> he said yes. So it was only fair we took him back to the scene of the crime. Let's go. He could pay another visit to his friends. The famous dog, huh? They showed up to OPD and applied for the canine position. They say a dog is a man's best friend. For Chico, Edward is his. A dog who made the distance, who will always find his way back home. Everybody talking that more relatable shit. Ain't nobody to come out the neighborhood. Listen, I done been to prison five times. I done been shot. I done been all the shit that knows that you fools that's glorifying and glamorizing the street is capping. You fools that's glorifying and glamorizing the street is capping. All y'all, you dig? You celebrating, talking about what a... No, my son ain't been to jail, ain't been none of that because... His daddy did all the shit. That's what being a parent to partner means, that I made the mistakes for my partner not to make, right? For him to learn, right? I made the mistakes for my partner not to make, right? For him to learn, right? And that's what you, everyone says to experience. Any real hood guy going to tell Shorty Shorty, don't get in no trouble. We're not going to be talking about let's go watch Shorty self-destruct. All right, we're going to get into them pedigrees. But first, I got to give y'all brothers that dog fighting bus. We got 73 dogs, 73 pit bulls confiscated. Um, I don't know what state. I don't know what city. I'm just going to say 73 pit bulls confiscated. And y'all brothers got to figure it out from there. 
You know what I'm saying? Y'all figured it out from there. <laughs> it, it ain't my thing to worry about. <laughs> 73 pit bulls confiscated in California. Turlook, Turlook County or Turlook City. But you know your boy got CNN satellites out of space. <laughs> CNN satellites out of space. We got dog seeds in California. We about to get into this. You know I give it to you. Fair and unbiased. Raw and uncut. Some gonna like it. Some ain't. So what? You know. It just is what it is. I gotta give it to you. I know y'all ain't thought. I thought I was gonna give y'all the bus without telling y'all where it was at. I was just messing with y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you. You keep fooling around. You keep fucking up. I'ma keep pressing that news. I'ma keep putting it up. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to none of the brothers that make the news. You know. No disrespect to nobody. But you know I got a news channel. You know what kind of news channel I got. So if you're living that life, you got you already got to respect what it is. You know what I'm saying? You already got to respect what it is. You're going to make your news and you're going to make the news. You know what I'm saying? Because now you have a dog news. So no matter who was doing it, you would make the dog news. I mean... It's me. But it don't matter who was doing it. You would make it. So like I said, Turlook County, 73 dogs. Turlook City, one of them. All I know, California, my brothers and sisters. Over 70 dogs, perhaps used for fights, seized in Turlock. Animal shelter crowding worsened. The Turlock Police Department took custody of over 70 dogs last week that it said were living in deplorable and inhumane, according to a news release. The dogs, some of which were pregnant and close to giving birth, are suspected of possibly being used in dog fighting and were part of an animal cruelty investigation the department launched in early March. During the course of the investigation, surveillance revealed approximately 10 dogs that were tethered in the yards, reads TPD's release. Tethering is a term to describe a practice of fastening an animal to a stationary object, which is illegal in the state of California. The dogs, 73 in total, were taken from three residences on the 400 block of South 1st Street. They were seized as evidence and are housed at Turlock's Animal Services Facility. This dog rescue comes on the heels of a spate of dog hoarding rescues last month in other parts of Stanislaus County, which has taxed the Stanislaus Animal Services Shelter as well. Due to overcrowding, Turlock Animal Services will not accept owner surrenders until further notice. The shelter already had 10 dogs that weren't part of the investigation and is asking the public's help in finding them homes. All fees are waived if residents choose to adopt, according to the release. The animal shelter can comfortably hold 32 dogs, said Dominique Sanchez, spokeswoman for TPD. None of the 73 dogs seized during TPD's search are up for adoption at this time, but were evaluated by a veterinarian and treated for any injuries or diseases, according to the release. Sanchez said a dog trainer would come to the shelter to determine which dogs are adoptable and which would need to be sent to a rescue facility. She also implored any rescue facility to reach out if it has space available. TPD listed 46-year-old Jorge Ayala of Turlock as a suspect in their investigation. His whereabouts are unknown. Police ask that anyone with information call Detective... Living in their own filth, essentially. And it was, it was so sad. It was truly horrific to see what these poor animals have been through. New tonight, police say more than 70 dogs were rescued from deplorable and inhumane conditions in Turlock. And take a look, police need your help tracking down this suspect in the case, 46-year-old Jorge Ayala. Turlock police say the animal cruelty and possible dog fighting investigation started early last month. Uh, just the smell was horrendous. It was something that none of us have ever smelt before. Um, how these animals were living in this condition, I don't know. It's just inhumane. Investigators say three homes were searched in the 400 block of South 1st Street. We're told in the three homes, 10 dogs were found tethered in yards, and a total of 73 dogs, including pregnant animals, were taken to the shelter for checkups and care. Going into the house and seeing crates on crates on crates of these dogs, multiple dogs in a crate, um, we were just astonished. Turlock Police and Animal Services says this massive discovery of 73 dogs is having a major impact. They have kennel space to fit around 40 dogs comfortably. So we are way past that. Um, we are asking the community to help, um, you know, adopt or even get these 
10 dogs that we have that were there prior to this search warrant. And due to the new dogs, Turlock Police Animal Services is not accepting any owner surrenders until further notice. Meanwhile, again, police need your help tracking down this man, 46-year-old Jorge Ayala. If you have any information, call investigators at 209-668-6570. Before we get into the pedigrees, when it comes to the perfect dog, because I've been asking y'all about the perfect dog over the past few videos, and we we come to the conclusion that does the perfect dog exist? You know, maybe there isn't a perfect dog, but maybe if it is a perfect dog, there'll never be a perfect owner with the dog. You know, um, maybe it's the perfect owner for the dog, but he himself is not perfect. So, you know, um, and then it comes to the point where we always say a great dog will make an average dog man look better than what he is, you know, and I believe all that. Then they say a great dog man will make a, a, a below average dog look decent, look like a, you know, over average dog. And I believe that because you got brothers out there and sisters out there who can pull the most out of them dogs, pull more than what anybody even seen out of them dogs. Those are the dog men that they are referring to. The dog men that can pull a 25% dog up to 50%, up to 75%. You know, those are the dog men that they're referring to. Um, and it just, if we got the perfect dog, your dog man ain't perfect. If you got the perfect dog man, you don't got the perfect dog. Every now and then, you know, that click, that, 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 that matchup clicks together. With a perfect dog man. Got the perfect dog. And like I said. It might be perfect for you. For what you need for your situation. But is it perfect. In the eyes of everybody else. You know when it comes to. Every single thing about that dog. Confirmation. Everything. You know. Yeah he was good. When he was doing his thing in the square. But he don't look worth a damn. But that don't matter in the square. Looks don't matter in the square. But look, looks matter when it comes to a perfect dog. Not a perfect dog in the square now. Don't get me wrong. But we not talking about that. We talking about a perfect all around dog. But yeah man. Let's, let's move on to these pedigrees you know. Let's move on to these pedigrees. And let's talk about percentages. Let's talk about. Mellow Yellow and her background um, when it comes to breeding, when it comes to, like I said, percentages, ins, outs, crosses, or whatever. Let's speak on it, you know. Uh, and, and when I put these pedigrees up here, you know, you got to look at this pedigree. If you know percentages, you know, this is one thing I got to explain to brothers, right? If you're going by percentages, 25, 50, 75, 100. Or whatever, as far as your breeding wise. What are you relying on? Your breeding? Or are you relying on what that paper tell you? Or what online pairs tell you? Because you can't breed a certain way. And then because you see something on online pairs, you think it's still there. If you're not even breeding that way no more. But you think it's still there because you see it on online pairs way in the backfield. You know? It's how, that's why I tell brothers, breed the way that you want to breed, make sure it's the way you want to breed, not how somebody else want to breed at the end of the day because don't think that stuff's still in your dog because you see it on online pairs and you ain't breeding the right way in the first couple of generations to keep all that stuff in there. Now, getting to Mellow Yellow Pedigree, I'm going to give y'all the fourth generation of Mellow Yellow Pedigree because a brother told me she had some scattered in her somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it all the way down and we're going to find the scattered. Okay. Now, fourth generation, fourth generation, mellow yellow. You know, um, let's get into it. All right. We're going to go to every single dog, the mothers and the fathers, every single dog. And we're going to look into their pedigrees to see what they possess. So we're going all the way back to the fourth generation. Now, if Mellow Yellow would have had 25% Chinaman in her fourth generation, in her fourth generation, if she would have had 25% Chinaman, 
by the time it got to her, it still would have been gone. Still would have been gone. If she would have had 25% in her fourth pedigree, any one of them dogs in the fourth got 25% uh, Chinaman or anything in it, by the time it got to Mellow Yellow, it's gone. But let's go to her fourth generation and look at her fourth generation. We're going to start with Crazy Eyes. You know, everybody know Crazy Eyes. You look at his pedigree, you see who we coming down off of. You know, um, Big John and Miss Kitty. Okay. You're looking at Crazy Eyes. You see Big John and Miss Kitty. And you see who Big John's off. You see Miss Kitty is off Burns Tom Jack. Bred to uh, Walk Sabre. Sabre is off Cruz, Cisco, and Big Mama. Sorry about that. Not Cruz, Cisco. Sorry. Chavis, Cisco, and Chavis, Big Mama. Okay, now Tom Jack is off Burn Stumpy and Cruz Gladys. Now I'm in the fourth generation of Mellow Yellow, the very top dog in the fourth generation, which is Crazy Eyes. And we're just looking at Crazy Eyes pedigree real quick. And, we, you know, we're going to break this thing all the way down, all the way down. So we're in the top of the fourth, Mellow Yellow, Crazy Eyes, and I'm in his background right now. You know, all red boy Jocko, all the way to... Chavis Double Trouble, Chavis Tipsy, Chavis Yellow John 2, Tance Ruby, um, Yellow John 2, Chavis Lady Rose, Chavis Jocko, Marlowe's Red Feather, and Red Boy. All these dogs are in Crazy Eyes 4th Generation. Now, let's go to the next dog, which will be Shakur. Crazy Eyes bred is Shakur, and that's in Mellow Yellow's 4th Generation at the very top, Shakur. Now, when you go to Shakur, you see Big John and CP. CP is off Burn Stumpy and Puckett's Dixie Bell. The same Puckett I just asked y'all brothers where all his dogs at. The only dog you see a Puckett in anybody's pedigree is this very exact dog that I'm talking about, Puckett, Puckett's Dixie Bell right here. And he had a whole yard full of dogs, you know. But hey, that's, that is what it is. We're not here to talk about that right now. We're here to talk about this red boy Jocko and this yellow stuff in mellow yellow. And is it scattered? You know, is it scattered? Now, like I said, we got burn stuff and Puckett's Dixie Bell. You know, and that's CP, bred to Big John. And you know who Big John coming down off of. Now, when you go to the next dog, you got country. Now, when you go to country pedigree, you got split is and Miss Cyclone. Split is coming off Little John and Blondie. Blondie is Big John's little mate sister on the top. Okay, no, no scattered in that. We see Miss Cyclone is, is off of Cyclone and welcome off Red Dallas. Red Dallas is off Little John. Sorry about that, Red Dallas 2. Red Dallas 2 is off Little John. And Red Dallas. Okay. Now, Red Dallas is off Big John and Dallas Girl. Okay. Now, Dallas Girl is off Termite. You know, and Carolina, Carolina uh, Kennels, Dallas. Carolina Kennels, Dallas, and Termite made Dallas Girl. Okay, all the same stuff. Okay, Dallas girl, Dallas girl coming directly off termite, bred in Big John. Okay, took that puppy, took that puppy, which is Red Dallas, bred that to Little John. Now, where y'all percentage is at now? Y'all brothers is going too far back when it comes to trying to find another line of dogs in these dogs. Too far back. Now, we bred Red Dallas to Little John, and then the puppy off that was Red Dallas 2, bred that back to Cyclone, which made Miss Cyclone, bred that back to Split Is, you know, and that's how you get country. Now, 
we in the fourth dog in the fourth generation of mellow yellow. And, and we have yet to find any scattered, any type of way that anything can still be floating in this dog outside of the yellow stuff. Now let's go to Missy Girl. Missy Girl is off Crazy Eyes and Missy. Missy is off Big John and his little mate sister bred back to each other. So we got Big John and his little mate sister bred to a son of Big John. Okay, now we ain't got to go no further back into that. We ain't got to go no further back into it. Now let's go to the fifth dog in Mellow Yellow's pedigree, fourth generation, which is Split Ears. Split Ears is off Little John and Blondie. Blondie is Big John's little mate's sister. You know, and if you look in the back of that pedigree, you don't see nothing but Chavis dogs. Nothing but Chavis dogs. Okay, we're back into Mellow Yellow's pedigree, fourth generation. We got Little Mama. Little Mama bred the split is. That's Mellow Yellow, fourth generation. <clears throat> Little Mama was off Big John 2. Bred back the Walks Baby. Okay. Now, let's look at how many generations we are, brothers. Because this is where I'm going to come in and break this down for you at. Now, we back at Mellow Yellow's. We back at Mellow Yellow's pedigree. Fourth generation, we're looking at Little Mama, okay? We're looking at Little Mama, and we want to look at what Little Mama percentage is of another line of dogs, okay? Now, we in Little Mama. Little Mama is off Big John 2 and Walk's Baby, okay? Walk's Baby Is a 50 50 dog. Walks Baby is a 50 50 dog. 50% Bud. She's off Bud, which is off Big John on the top. And on the bottom, she's coming down off the Mountain Man Hummer stuff. You know, 50 50. And that's Walks Baby. Okay. That 50 50 dog bred to Big John 2, which made a 25% dog. The 25% dog is Little Mama. Little Mama is a 25% dog that bred back to another 100% dog, which made the dog named Rattler. You know, which made the dog named Rattler. Rattler bred back to another 100% dog, which made the dog Rounder Rousey. Ronda Rousey bred to another 100% dog, which made the dog Hacksaw. Hacksaw bred to another 100% dog, which made the dog Mellow Yellow. Okay? Now, and when, when it comes to percentages, my brothers, we started with 25%. A dog named Little Mama in Mellow Yellow's Fourth generation, that was 25% Mountain Man. Hummer. Okay. In the fourth generation, she's already down to 25%. And I just broke the other percentages all the way down for you. Now, what I'm saying here, what I'm speaking here is, in Mellow Yellow, I cannot... I cannot look to see dogs that came back from the Mountain Man's Sally dog and the Mountain Man Hummer dog. The percentages is gone. 25, 50, 75, 100. Now we're talking about 125, 150, 175, 200. Well, we done inbreed, inbreed, inbreed. <coughs> the Mountain Man Sally stuff, that Mountain Man Hummer is gone. You know? There's no way I can pull that back up unless I go back into that stuff. 
There's no way I can advertise my dog as having Mountain Man Hummer and all that type of stuff in it. By me even advertising, oh, he has some Hummer and stuff in it. That's false claims. That's false advertising. You know, false advertising. I'm not trying to do do this dog thing, my dog thing, like them brothers who got, when you got the DNA thing on TV, when we trying to find Ancestry.com. You know, when we going all the way back to slave days and all that. We not doing that. You know what I'm saying? We doing, if, if you bred a certain way, your dog going to end up a certain way. The papers don't make your dog a certain way because you see certain things on, on that online pad. Look at it like this. If you had your four generation pedigree from ADBA, right? Can you look and see the mother dogs once you get to that fourth generation? Can you see the mother dogs that you can see on online pads? On online pads, you can just keep clicking, keep clicking, keep clicking. When you get that paper, you can't see past the fourth generation unless you got an eight generation paper, you know? But just say you got a fourth generation because nothing else after that matters. Nothing else after all that stuff matters. If it's scattered bread in, in between them four generations, then it's scattered bread. But if it ain't, it ain't, you know? But let's move on to the next dog because that's little mama. We back down to crazy eyes, which I just showed y'all brothers and sisters. You know, showed you that was running straight pure. And we got triple bread. When you're going to triple bread pedigree, you're seeing the same Chavis dogs. All Chavis dogs ain't no in the tent, dog. Okay, and that's in triple bread pedigree. Now, we had 125% dog that was in the top part of the fourth generation that was bred to nothing but 100% dogs. So, please tell me where my percentages come from at. Please tell me where my percentages come from. Like I said before, brothers, and I don't mean this in no disrespect, you know what I'm saying? But you got to feel how you feel about your dogs. I'm I'm rocking with the folk that are breeding these dogs. You know what I'm saying? Brothers giving me their explanations about things from the hometown. You know what I'm saying? I keep telling y'all, what y'all see, I'm not seeing. What y'all doing, I'm not doing. You know, and I don't mean that in no bad way. You know what I'm saying? The stuff that I know, you might not know on certain things. It don't mean it's a bad thing. It just mean I'm hometown. I'm here. I'm around it 24-7. I'm not just going to buy a puppy and, and, and hollering when I'm going to buy a puppy. You know, I've been dealing with this stuff. I'm not just a brother who get online who never had this stuff and haven't had this stuff in over 30 years and get up here and give an explanation about it. You know, I had dogs off Garner's Akuma a couple years ago. I had dogs coming down off Spike, Frisco, and all them dogs way back in the days. So I can speak from back in the days and modern day time. You know? And it just, you know, brothers look at things certain ways when it comes to pedigrees. Everybody going to look at it how they want to look at it. You know what I'm saying? But breed, like I said before, breed to how you want your dog to be. Don't rely on that online pad to make you feel like your dog a certain way if you're not breeding that way. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before, we went to the fourth generation of Mellow Yellow and we found one dog that had 25% Mount Man Hummer in it or Mount Man Selly dog, whichever one you want to call it from, the Mount Man. One dog that had that in, in the fourth generation. We got 16 dogs in the fourth generation. 16 dogs. So we got 15 other dogs that's 100% in a circle with one dog that's 25% mountain man, 75% of what they is. Other 15 dogs, all the same. One dog, 25% of something else. And you telling me where am I supposed to find this at? And you telling me that's scattered? You can't get no more pure than that. I mean, we can't go back to two of those Dabo brothers to start finding dogs who have um, other lines in it. Somewhere or another, you got to make your line. Everybody bought a dog from somebody else. One way or another. Everybody, every single person bought a dog from somebody else. At one point, every single body 
pedigrees said something else until they start breeding their dogs. You know, that's what makes a pure dog once you start breeding your dogs. It don't matter how scattered these dogs is. Once it becomes a Pelican Bay bred dog, if I'm consistently breeding the brothers, the daddies, the mamas, and all them back with each other, these are pure Pelican Bay dogs. It don't matter about the stuff in front of that. You know, it matters about the way I'm breeding. You know what I'm saying? My dog's names. If my dog named Jimbo, Timbo, and, and Rambo, you know, and they all scattered bred, and I'm breeding them all to, and they all of the same litter. They all of the same litter. They all scattered bred. But you don't think if I breed them dogs consistently, uh, year after year, 10 years, 15 years down the line, year after year, they all were scattered bred. But this is a pure line now. A pure line of these dogs. Rambo, Jimbo, and, and whatever. You know, it don't matter. You can't keep going back, back, and back just to find something that doesn't exist in these dogs no more. Y'all brothers going to keep on going back till you find yourself a damn blue dog is what you're going to do. You're going to keep going back till you find your damn blue dog and you're going to try to hide it then. Don't show nobody. Throw the book away. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's a blue dog. Oh, man, throw that book away. Don't, well, don't tell nobody about it. Leave that, leave that in the library. Let that come out when I'm old and gray. <laughs> After I done sold all these puppies. You know what I'm saying? Man, big salute to my brothers down in the chat, my sister down in the chat. Y'all hit that like button up, man. Y'all hit that like button up and breathe for how you want. Don't rely on online pets. You see how quick them haters took off hog pet? You see how they did that? Like I said before, they don't. somebody don't understand that the whole world got online pets and anybody can put hog back up there. You know, common sense. Some brothers don't got it. Some brothers book smart with no common sense. Hey, it just is what it is, man. Call it how I see it. You know, call it the way it is. Like I said, I'm just doing a breakdown from brothers. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like I said, when we talk yellow, we talking yellow. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got none of that Mayday stuff in that there. You know, I ain't had to rely on none of them, uh, none of them Mayday dogs. I keep telling y'all brothers. It, it, it make y'all feel funny when you're talking about yellow dogs and none of them got Mayday in them, don't it? You know, don't it? None of them got Mayday in them. You know, none of them got that Cinco stuff. None of them got no tents, mat, no none of that type of stuff. You know, none of them modern, none of them new day, modern day tent dogs. It make you feel funny. It make you feel strange. You know, it just is what it is, man. I told y'all, I talk that trash. And when it comes to these dog talk, because at the end of the day, I never had to rely on that Mayday stuff. Because the Mayday stuff wasn't doing nothing around here. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't doing nothing. Mighty funny, Mayday stuff wasn't doing nothing when Mayday was living around here. <laughs> but damn, his damn show doing something 30 years later. Want to hate on J.D. Hall. <laughs> like, don't get mad at me, uh, Maul Cunt, because J.D. Hall was the more famous than Hogg himself. You know, more people rather breed with J.D. Don't get mad with the bait, dog. You, your brother, all y'all. Your cousin, your nephew. Hey, it is what it is. Haters gonna run in the blood, dog. You know, you can't stop it. It's past your hands now. You know what I'm saying? These dog and these dogs are in great dog men hands now. You know, the same way I say about other brothers who who be out there acting all bad, acting all effed up. You know what I'm saying? But once your dogs get in other brothers' hands, they don't need you no more. You know, keep your screwed up mentality, your screwed up way of thinking over there. We got your dogs. And we running it. You know, and we bred them the way you couldn't breed them, the way you didn't breed them, you know what I'm saying, and got something you couldn't, didn't get, rather. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, at the end of the day, I refuse to dick ride. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, it's all gravy over here, baby. The yellow in the sand, like I always say, man. You know what I'm saying? Big salute to all my brothers from one side of the world to the other side of the world, from Croatia to my brothers in Compton. You know what I'm saying? Big salute to all my dog brothers, you know. All my dog brothers. It just is what it is, man. It is what it is. Hey. All I can do is give it to you, man. Break it down. One day y'all want dogs to be off this. One day y'all want them to be off that. 
You know what I'm saying? I see, I understand exactly now where y'all brothers is coming from with this thing. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't, we just, I mean, y'all can do what y'all want to do. But me, myself, I refuse <laughs> the, the damn, the, the sell my dogs, the sell my dogs, the advertise my dogs, the speak upon my dogs, to say they got anything in them, you know, to resorting back to 1990, 96, if I ain't did no inbreeding. If I ain't inbreed that stuff in my dogs, and you talking about stuff from 96, and that's the last time it was bred into my dog, you think I'm going to be talking about it? And I done bred all this other stuff, all this other blood in it from 96 to now? <laughs> Where is it? Now, let me let me tell you this, my brothers. Metal Yellow have a black puppy, and she ain't been bred to a dog with black in them. Outside of what brothers acclaim that uh, little mama got in her in her fourth generation, Mellow Yellow have a black puppy. If I breed Mellow Yellow with Fletcher, she have a black puppy. <laughs> a fucking stray came in my yard and hit that shit. I'm going to tell you that now. That ain't no mountain man, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's more Merino than it is mountain man. Merino don't even throw black dogs. You know what I'm saying? It ain't Merino's on. I won't blame it on him. You know, it ain't JD's on. Can't blame it on him. You know, if Mellow Yellow throw a black dog, bred back to Fletcher, it's no way in hell, you know, on, on, on God's great green earth that Mountain Man Hummer dogs gonna pop back up in that offspring. <laughs> and if I'm trying to sell you a black dog, and you look at Mellow Yellow bred to Fletcher, you know, which is a little mate, brother, and sister breeding, and you see a black dog come from that, you know, sit me down, let me see this video, and show me what I'm telling you right now. That shit ain't happening, fam. That shit gone, dog. You know what I'm saying? That shit gone. Out of here with the wind. If I wanted the mountain man stuff still in it, then the thing I should have did Back in 90, 2000, in, in the year 2000, was introduced that back into the program. Introduced the Mountain Man back into the program back in 2000. Not 2010, not 2015, 2020. We in 24 now. No, I should have did that back in 2000. Introduced that Mountain Man stuff back in there. Start making it back stronger. You know, not 30 years later. The only way you see in this because you're dealing with computers that you can track all this stuff down. It's like me tracking down um, uh, uh, the Lightner dogs, the, the Kobe dogs. I mean, who thinks their dog has Kobe's picture in it right now? Who thinks their dog has uh, 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 Ferguson centipede in it right now? You know, who thinks their dog has Pilot's uh, uh, fighting Peter? Fighting Peter in it right now. But we all, we all can go on online pairs and hit them little buttons and trace back to it. But, I mean, if you didn't breathe for it, it's not there. There's no way in hell it's there. No way. No way, my brothers. You know? No way. I mean, like, you got a better chance. You got a better chance of having a 50-50 white and black relationship in 1995. Say it happened in 1995. A brother and a, and a white sister got together and they made kids. And their daughter or their son never went back white again from 1995. But you can't do humans because the years go the years go too fast. Dogs breed a whole lot faster. But if humans was breeding fast like dogs... From 1995, you think we can say that them kids got any more white in them if they breeding every year? <clears throat> They're not breeding like humans every 20 years. They breeding like dogs every single year. We got another group of kids coming off of black daddies every year. The first one was light skinned. The second one was a little bit darker. The third one was jet black. 
The fourth one was blacker than that. The fifth one was black. Black, black. And are you talking about 40, 50 generations later? Okay, do it the same way with humans. Do it the same way with humans, with dogs. Okay, now we're talking 1995. You know how many generations of dogs that is? To 2024? Possibly 30 generations. Possibly, you know, possibly 30 some generations of dogs. Okay. Now, if we're talking about 30 some breedings back to back, you know, uh, this dog, that dog, if, if we count every generation is the sons, the grandsons, you know, like that. Now, go back 30 generations in your family. We ain't going to do years with people because they don't breed every year. Go back 30 generations with your family. And that's going to be your, your lifetime, your mama life, I mean, your mama lifetime, your grandmama lifetime, your great grandma lifetime. Go all the way back. Then you had a 50 50 couple 30 generations back. 30 generations back, you might be going into biblical times. If you go 30 generations back, you might be going into times of the Bible or the Quran. 30 generations. Now you telling me a 50 50 relationship from 30 generations back. Matter in 2024, you telling me your mama or, or daddy only went one way from 30 generations back and it's going to matter to you in 2024. You got a little Irish in you 30 generations back. <laughs> went black. Every single thing was black from 30 generations on back. And you tell me that Irish going to be showing up in you. You telling me 2024, you could pop up with a white baby and say, oh, this from 30 generations back, and you're going to have that. You're going to have that without flipping the house over, knocking over the TVs, telling your girl she's a damn lie. Oh, that's the Irish popping up in them 30 generations ago. <laughs> not my mama, not my mama half Irish, or my granddaddy half Irish, or my great granddaddy. No, 36 generations, 30 some generations ago. And y'all brothers keep wanting to look at these dogs and want to blur. They're not there no more, dog, if you're not breeding. You know, and I don't mean no disrespect to none of my brothers. You know, that's just my opinion on uh, the way we breed on our side. If it's 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. If we breed four times, if we start off with a 50-50, you know, 100% this dog, 100% that dog, the offspring is 50-50. We take the offspring of that, we go back into the daddy. That's a 75%, 25% of the mama. We take that offspring, we go back into the daddy again. That's 100% of the daddy offspring, dropping it down to 0% of the mama. But you still may find something in there, right? You still may find some genes in there because that's still kind of close. But let's go again, back to the daddy. You know, let's go again, back to the daddy. Fuck it. Let's go one more time, back to the daddy. Let's go one more time, back to the daddy. And we gonna still find this? You got what you got. It's called real life breeding, and you got cyber breeding. Cyber breeding to make you think you got something that you ain't got. When you look at that core, core efficiency, um, thing when they're showing you your statistics and all that, that ain't right, fam. You know, they going the way they adding it, adding it up. You know, it's not right. And if you're going by that, you know, I mean, we can say, it, I'm gonna say it like this, right? It is right, but it's not accurate. You know, it's not accurate. And then at the same time, at the same time, it is accurate because it's it's inaccurate, but it's it's accurate because if brothers not worrying about them pedigrees and what's in the 30 generations away from your dog, then the percentages is gonna show you how much you got of that actual dog. It's not even worrying about your dog coming off yellow. It's worrying about that your dog named Crazy Eyes. You 50% crazy eyes. 50% this, you know, and if all the dogs coming off yellow in that pedigree, <laughs> you 100% yellow dog, but they ain't going to have you down on that, that, that pedigree pet stat as no 100% yellow dog, 
they're going to have you on the pad stat as a 5% yellow dog. You know? Because they ain't judging it by every single dog in your pedigree off yellow. They're going by names. How many times the names show up in your pedigree? That's what they're going by. It don't matter that every single dog in your pedigree off yellow, which means you'll be a very high percentage yellow dog. You know? So we can't go by that online pad when we judging real life with these dogs, man. But anyway, hope y'all brothers and sisters had a great day, man. Great evening. It's your boy, PBK9s. Always giving it to you. Fair and uncut, raw and unbiased. Had a little pads for y'all brothers today. We talking about, I gave y'all the Turluk uh, dog fighting situation. A little bit of news, you know. A little bit of, uh, we hit it from all angles. You know what I'm saying? Y'all brothers stay safe and remember, you only can get it one place. The bait. I'm out. A lot of people don't know this, but if you have the YouTube app on your phone, you could be using it to make up to $10,000 a month thanks to